For those of you who don't know me, I'm Roger Sutton. I'm Roger Sutton. I'm the boss of SERA. Um, and it's great um, to have the Minister of Youth Affairs, the Honourable Nikki Kay, here. So she'll speak in a moment. But first of all, I was just going to say um, you know, there's a lot of people here who've been involved in the survey. Um, thank you very much for all your hard work in bringing this together. Um, I think both the, um, the, all the local councils, the Ministry of Education, the DHB, um, the Natural Hazards Platform, um, there's a bunch of organisations here, and of course Sarah people who have brought this together. And you know, the city is being rebuilt for everybody, but I think it's especially being rebuilt for the young people, and we need to be very closely connected with the feelings of the young people, what their needs are, to make sure we are um, in tune with what they need um, to go forward. So look, with that, I'd very much like, it gives me great pleasure to introduce um, the Minister of Youth Affairs, Nikki Kay, who's also the Minister of Civil Defence as well. Welcome, Minister. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Can I start by acknowledging Roger? Um, I think we, you know, there are, there are some jobs in New Zealand that are pretty tough, um, and we require people who are really strong leaders, and I just want to acknowledge the job that you're doing, Roger. Um, but it, to everyone here in the room, you know, one thing I have learnt from, about being Associate Minister of Education uh, and Minister of Youth Affairs is we have some extraordinary, passionate and committed people to the lives of young people in New Zealand. And last night I was with the Prime Minister in Hekia Parata at the Prime Minister's Education Awards. And that was a wonderful celebration of some extraordinary New Zealanders that every day are making a significant difference. And basically the Prime Minister said that. He also acknowledged that for some schools the reality is many of the teachers and principals pick up uh, and help out beyond what we would normally consider in terms of our school system. And when I think and reflect on Canterbury and my experiences of coming down here meeting some of you, you know, I, and we'll obviously talk about the survey results, and I think they're okay. Um, I think we have to be really honest about some of the aspects of them, and we have to make sure that whatever we do in the future, we are addressing some of those issues. But I think if you looked at what actually has happened here, there is no doubt of the commitment in terms of people on the ground. There is absolutely no doubt in terms of the investment that has gone in here. I mean, whether it's the school investment, you know, over a billion dollars, whether it's the money that we're putting into uh, youth mental health and the Canterbury Youth Mental Health Programme, there's a lot of money going in to try and make sure that separate to the infrastructure recovery, we actually do everything that we can to um, help with what is the people recovery in the city. You know, what the this, this survey did show is while there were some, some interesting, sort of reasonably positive results, I think um, Canterbury young people, um, compared to other young people in New Zealand, feel actually reasonably safe in this city. And if you look in my capacity as Minister of Civil Defence at what has happened in other parts of the world when you have a major event like this, sometimes people don't feel safe. So that's reasonably positive. But it's pretty clear that for some young people, they are really feeling it in terms of um, access to positive things to do. And... I'm announcing today $100,000 for a Canterbury Youth Initiatives Fund. And, you know, we're pretty open as to what that is spent on. Um, I know that, um, uh, I think, and I believe I can say this, Fletchers have committed to, we're very glad, glad that a, a um, private sector are they here as well. Thank you. Uh, putting up about $50,000 um, to be part of, I think it's the Winter Chill event series. And this 100000 that I'm putting up, I expect some of it may be events, and I know we're going to hear from Taylor, um, but some of it may also be other social enterprise product projects. Because we actually want to do everything we can to give young Cantabrians um, access to some positive activities during this time when they don't have access to all of their infrastructure. But then also, we want to enable some of the young leaders in Canterbury to be able to step up with projects that might make a difference. 
Tied into that is recently the, the Prime Minister and I announced $2.5 million, which is for business and social enterprise projects across New Zealand. So I also expect, and I am encouraging you, particularly you grassroots youth organisations, to apply for that fund. Because I think whether it is an environmental project, um, whether it is a project um, helping young people with mental health issues, we need to more and more get young people engaged in the social recovery of Canterbury. Uh, so thank you so much for coming uh, today. Um, I think, you know, overall we need to be um, really pretty vigilant about what we are doing in the future around Canterbury to assist young people. There's a huge amount of money going in to make sure, make, to make sure that when it comes to things like infrastructure, whether it's our schools, um, you know, whether it's some of the uh, facilities that Canterbury will have, that young people will want to make their home here in the future. But in the short term, it is very important that we put some money into getting those young people through. And two of these announcements today are about that support. Um, and I just want to thank you all again for, for the work that you do every day. Um, have a wonderful day. Tina Koto, Tina Koto, Tina Koto Kato. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, I think that's fantastic. Um, I think the Ministry of Youth Affairs do um, a great job working with young people. I think this government money will make a significant difference to getting a number of initiatives going. But getting these initiatives going also takes leaders. And that's a focus within CERA to try and make sure we are supporting leaders who are trying to drive and shape these initiatives to make sure they do actually you know, deliver really great outcomes to our young people as well. And it helps them stay here and become involved in a really exciting rebuild. So I'd now like to invite my, um, my 2IC who looks after social and cultural affairs, Michelle Mitchell, who's just going to talk a bit more about the results of the youth surveys. Michelle, there somewhere? Welcome, Michelle. Tina Koto, Kautoa. Uh, welcome everybody. So I'm going to take you through um, the actual survey results and I've got Jane on the clicker which will be very helpful. So Sarah and, and its partners developed the youth survey because we wanted to make sure that the voices of young people in Greater Christchurch were able to be heard as we uh, embark upon and continue with the, re with the recovery. We also know that they are going to be the heart of the creative thinking as well uh, and be able to contribute to that design work in terms of what that might look like. We also wanted to make sure that we were understanding what their particular needs were at this time. <coughs> Excuse me. We also know that young people have uh, different strengths and, and different uh, areas where they can contribute and we've seen some of that not only through the response phase with some groups of young people that will be very commonly known to you all, um, but also through some of the tougher stuff that we're working through at the moment. So in terms of the purpose, the survey, the first of its kind, provided these young people with an opportunity to have their voice heard. So uh, Sarah, along with its partner agencies, we're going to use these responses in the survey to make sure that we uh, are guided upon our decision making and also that we consider these results alongside some of the other survey information and data information and the recovery that we track and monitor over time. So partner agencies that have been involved in the survey are the Ministry of Youth Development, Canterbury District Health Board, Ministry of Education, Natural Hazards Research Platform, Christchurch City Council, Selwyn and Waimakariri District Councils, and the Collaborative for Research and Training in Youth Health and Development. The working group has successfully collaborated to be able to um, bring these, the survey and the results together and this is a, a collaboration of both uh, government, local and central government agencies as well as sector organisations. And as you can imagine initially bought and shared different skills, viewpoints and priorities in developing the survey. 3,341 young people completed the survey and young people themselves also were involved in the development of the survey. 25 13 to 23 year olds were consulted on in terms of the content and their feedback was included and incorporated into the changes in terms of some of the questions within the survey. Surveying young people is tricky. I know that because I have two young people and getting them to do 
certain things that I might like them to do is not always as easy as one would like. But it is a tribute to the people that, um, and, and most of you, a number of you in this room, that went about and put a lot of effort into ensuring that the voices of the young people were captured. Hundreds of survey responses were gathered by the use of uh, tablets, people walking around schools, events and other such things that happened. Churches as well and the AMP and shopping malls. Taylor Reese from WIMAC, who's going to be speaking later today, she was part of this effort and managed to get a number of surveys completed from, um, from walking around at one of the particular events. Willingness of young people to complete the survey was absolutely incredible, and that was before some of the donated prizes were mentioned. So some of those prizes, which um, are up on a further slide when we get to it, were around a computer, an iPad mini, and of course the prize number one, uh, cheese toasties made by Roger Sutton. So I do want to, at this point, uh, make a special thank you and, and mention to those people that have worked really hard to ensure that young people's voices were gathered for the survey. So now getting onto the details of, well, what does the survey tell us? As I mentioned before, 3,341 young people aged between 12 and 24 years of age completed the survey in Greater Christchurch. 2,408 of those were from Christchurch City, 520 from the Selwyn District, and 413 from the Waimakariri district. Uh, interesting to note that higher female respondents uh, completed the survey, and that's typical, apparently, in terms of survey responses. No surprises there, then. A large proportion, 64% of those respondents, were also in school. In respect of spaces and places, lots of spaces and places to which young people went before the earthquakes, the impact of that was felt quite widely. 73% experienced a loss of social and cultural venues, which has had a major to moderate impact in terms of 25%. 63% experienced a loss of sport and recreation facilities, and 18% of, of that 63% felt that they were experiencing a major and moderate negative impact. Other issues that got identified in terms of the sport um, spaces and places item were transport problems, services moving or closing down, or being in damaged environments that was also causing some stress for people. There are also some positive signs that came through within the survey. 75% of young people had seen progress in the rebuild. 71% had been able to go to new and um, repaired places for entertainment. And 59% have had the opportunity to, to participate in public events. There are also a number of things about the rebuild that have young people excited in our city. Perhaps we should be excited too. Um, the new modern buildings and facilities. A better city than was there before. Interesting places to hang out in. More sports facilities and opportunities for recreation. 58% agreed that there's a good opportunities for social activities and entertainment in Christchurch. What of their wellbeing? Like um, all of us in Greater Christchurch, young people are also feeling uh, levels of stress. 94% of the respondents indicated they have felt stress in the last 12 months, and that has had a negative impact on them. 27% they feel, feel they feel stressed most or all of the time. Uh, one thing to note is the survey timing was completed in around November last year, and so there is an element that we're you know, obviously not sure of because we didn't survey it around the impacts of studying for um, NCA uh, at that time. Fortunately, they also recognise that they have places to turn, and that's an important thing for our young people, as you would note. 81% said that they have someone to turn to if they needed help, um, and if that was emotional support or faced with a serious illness or injury. And 57% felt a sense of community with others in their neighbourhood. The sense of community has had some positive outcomes. 75% have helped family, friends and community as a result of the earthquake and that's something that I know that they and we should be proud of. 73% have had an improved ability to cope, so out of the uh, you know, fear of being in an earthquake environment and the aftershocks, their resilience levels are stronger. But there are some remaining ongoing issues that are difficult. The loss of spaces and places continue to affect 25% negatively, and a loss of the sport and recreation facilities is affecting 18%. Other continuing issues include problems with transport, dealing with family members who are angry or upset in respect of working through their insurance issues, difficulty finding appropriate places to rent, 
and worries about aftershocks and being separated from friends. Looking ahead, young people identify education in particular as an area for which there are good prospects in Greater Christchurch. 75% agree that there are good opportunities to train or study. A somewhat lower majority feel confident about employment opportunities. 52% agree there are good employment opportunities and 57% see that there are good opportunities to advance in a career in, a great, in Greater Christchurch. So, looking ahead. Of school students who indicated that they were intending to leave school in 2013, the top types of jobs sought were in the areas of trades, professional, construction, hospitality, retail, agriculture, transport and health. Finally, I'd like to thank you again um, for the work that those who are in this room have done in terms of being involved in the collaborative effort to bring together the survey results. Um, I'd also like to thank the young people who contributed to the survey. Having their voices heard is immensely important to us. Um, and most of all, I'd like to thank you for your ongoing and commitment to the young people of Greater Christchurch. Because whether you are you know, a parent, or you are in the education system, or you just rub shoulders with children, we all have a responsibility to ensure that Greater Christchurch is, a, is the best place in the world for young people to live and thrive. Thank you. So the last part of our program, we've got um, Taylor Reese um, is just going to talk to us about some of her own experiences. So Taylor is chairperson of the Waimakariri Youth Council. Is that what I do? So um, she's been really active in her community, um, working on events and generally trying to keep the youth motivated and excited about the future we've got. So it's really nice to have you here, Taylor. Come to the microphone. Thank you. Um, I'm really excited to be here today to share my perspective on the Youth Wellbeing Survey. Um, so yeah, I'm Taylor and I'm 19. I'm currently at the University of Canterbury studying social work and I'm the chairperson of the Waimakariri Youth Council and Y Youth, which is a youth action group. Uh, the Waimakariri Youth Council works with the district council to make a difference for young people in the community and Y Youth focuses on putting on events for young people in the district. We view the Youth Wellbeing Survey as a strong way to promote the youth voice in the recovery. It's also a useful addition to our work with the District Council in showing them what young people actually want, which is why we agreed to be a part of it. I was lucky enough to have a bit of a role in all of this. Why Youth were consulted on questions alongside the Christchurch Youth Council and the Selwyn Youth Council. It was really awesome to see that our feedback was made, has made a difference to the questions in the final survey. We also contributed to branding the survey so that young people would actually want to do it. As part of the promotion of the survey, Why Youth worked alongside Sarah to reach out to young people in the community, we went to school assemblies, shared the survey over social media and put up posters. We also went really hard to reach schools with tablets to gather responses, as well as going to a local event to set up a youth stall. The Waimakariri Youth Council are going to use the survey results to find out what areas we need to help young people in our community with, to support the youth voice in the district and to support lobbying our councillors and community boards on issues that are important to our young people. The Youth Wellbeing Survey has shown young people about exercising positive youth participation and governance, and we are excited to see how our voices and the issues that we have highlighted will help determine the daily decision making of recovery agencies in Canterbury. I've also been working with Sarah and the Ministry of Youth Development alongside other Youth Council members, University Association reps and specialised focus youth groups members on what could be done to address the top issues from the survey, loss of spaces and recreational facilities. The Canterbury, Youth Voice, uh, sorry, the Canterbury Youth Initiative Fund, with Minister Kay announcing today, is going to be so helpful for young people and making great things happen, and it's really exciting to work on this and know that it's not just a token gesture. It's also really cool that now there's funding available to group like, groups like mine to put on initiatives, activities and events for young people in our areas. Now this is something that we've really struggled with as a group since the earthquakes. While we've really wanted to put on activities, the lack of venues really affects us, particularly in winter as we can't afford things like marquees. Having extra funding available will really help youth organisations with logistics. We want to be able to do things like put on cool speakers to inspire our young people and sport days to get young people out and about and continue to hold youth forums on to get young people's um, needs heard. There are so many amazing creative ideas and it'll be really exciting to see that these can happen now. It's also making other really important things happen too. 
The Canterbury Youth Initiative Fund is giving groups like mine the chance to form partnerships and good working relationships with organisations like Sarah and the Ministry of Youth Development. This funding is short term, uh, so, uh, sorry, this funding is a short term solution, but through the relationships we are growing, we can build sustainability into our group's activities and continue to be active voices in our community and in the recovery. Hopefully the youth voice will continue to be heard across the recovery and the Canterbury Youth Initiative Fund and other cool initiatives resulting from the survey results will make things better for young people in Greater Christchurch. Thanks. Well that completes, well thank you very much Taylor. Um, it was really good to hear your perspective on, on these issues. Um, and I think we need to carry on working really hard to make sure we are not just doing these surveys, but also engaging with your sort of organisation to make sure we are actually delivering um, support and also helping you sort of you all grow as leaders as well. So look, that completes the, um, the event. Um, there's a cup of tea, maybe a milkshake or something, I don't know, those good days when I was growing up. Burger bars in Hamilton was always a thick shake if you're feeling really extravagant. But look, there's a cup of tea here and if any media want to talk to um, the Minister or uh, Taylor, they'll be here as well. Thank you very much.